All right, so you guys, we have been reviewing all about the quadratic functions. We have talked about all the different forms of the quadratic function and how to go from one form to the other and all the different features. One of the last things we learned in grade 10 about the quadratics was quadratic word problems. And so these are quadratic function applications. And the general idea behind all of the word problems we're gonna do today is the shape of whatever is happening is gonna follow a parabolic motion. So examples are someone throws a football from one person to the other. Someone kicks a soccer ball from one person to the other or down the field. Um, a rocket is launched and it goes up into space and it comes back down. All of these things are parabolic in motion. And so all of our graphs are gonna look like this. Now, there are some very key features of the graph that we want to look at. And these are the questions I'm going to be asking you. And one of the most important ones is the vertex. So at the vertex, it tells you two key important pieces of information. The x value is, in this example, when is the object at the maximum height? And the y value is how high does the object get? Now, obviously, this depends on what the actual axes are, right? It depends on if it's time or if it's horizontal distance. But the vertex gives you two very key important pieces of information. And we'll always start with that. The y-intercept tells you the initial something. So for example, if we're talking about um, a kick, a diving off a swimming board or a diving board, it tells you how high was the diving board when you actually jumped off of it, your initial height. And the key thing to remember here is for the y-intercept, you have to let x equal to zero, and then you basically just solve algebraically. And then the other two things we're going to look at are the x-intercepts, which are also known as your zeros. And you're going to notice that you're going to have two different x-intercepts. At these points, y is going to be equal to zero, and then we're going to try to solve that way. Now, one of the zeros is going to be negative, and for most of our situations, that zero is not going to count because you can't have a negative time or a negative horizontal distance. So we're mostly going to be looking at just this positive zero here. And the questions I can ask you are, when does the object hit the ground and how long is the object in the air? So this is basically like a cheat sheet giving you all of the questions I could possibly ask you. And we're going to practice doing this for a couple of examples. Now, one really important thing, a uh, piece of information I want you to tell you is if you have an equation in standard form, that is going to be very limited in what it tells you. And so you're going to have to practice is changing it to vertex form by completing the square. So in some of the examples, I'll give you the equation already in vertex form, which is perfect. And in some of them, it'll be in standard form and we're gonna practice completing the square. Just looking at this chart, does this sound some, like something you may have learned before? Yeah, okay, good. I like to hear that. But again, I'm gonna pretend like you haven't and we'll do this super, super slowly. So we have um, three examples to get through today. The first one says the flight of one type of rocket at the symphony of fire, a symphony of fire, I believe is this big fireworks show. Um, so one type of rocket or firework at the symphony of fire is described by the function H is equal to negative 4.9 bracket T minus five squared plus 124, where H is the height of the rocket in meters and T is the time in seconds since the rocket was fired. So we want to start by representing this using um, a visual. And we also should recognize that this equation is already given us given to us in vertex form. So that means we're probably going to have to do a lot less work to answer these questions. Okay, so let's draw an x and a y axis. I'll give you guys a second to do that. Okay, once I've drawn my axes, I need to figure out what the axes actually represent, like what's going where. And the way I do this, I sort of have a little bit of a, uh, a thing that I follow. I know usually our equations are given like this, right? Y is equal to X plus or minus something plus something. We're really used to writing all of our parabolas or all of our vertex form in this case. Now we have different letters, but that's okay because I'm actually just gonna match these up. See this H, it is in the position of the Y. That means the H is gonna go on the Y axis. And the question tells me that my H is the height of the rocket. So I know that on my Y axis, I am going to write the height of the rocket and it's in meters. Yeah. 
Okay, then I need to do, I'm going to do the same thing again. This time I'm going to look at the letter in here and compare it to the letter here. I know my T is usually where the X goes. And in this question, T is the time and it's represented in seconds. So that means my X axis is going to be my time in seconds. And really, as long as you just remember our original formula of y is equal to blah, 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 it doesn't matter what letters are used in the question, you just compare them and that's how you're gonna label your stuff. Okay, and how is the shape of this gonna look? Like I said, all of our graphs are gonna follow a parabolic motion. So the rocket is gonna look something like this. Okay, now one of the most important pieces of information that we can get from something that is in vertex form is the actual vertex. So in this question, what do you notice the vertex to be? Yeah, it's just gonna be five comma 124. You get that by looking inside the bracket and changing the, um, the sign of it and then just reading the other number as is. Okay, so let's just think about the five comma 124 right now. What that represents is, if I were to just go to my graph over here, it's this value over here, and the five is how much you've gone across, and the 124 is in this direction over here. So this is five, and this is 124. And honestly, for all of these questions, I always start off in the same way. I first figure out the vertex and then I label it and I try to see what it's saying. This vertex is basically telling me after five seconds of time, the rocket reaches the maximum height of 124 meters. So it took five seconds to get there and the maximum height was 124. Yeah? So you could start at zero comma zero. I just know for the majority of these questions, it doesn't start at zero comma zero. In fact, you would probably be more accurate if you didn't start at zero comma zero. You have to read the question. So a rocket is usually fired from a platform of some sort, like not depth to the ground. Um, so the question should give you a little bit of context. But not even because when you kick a ball, you're not actually making contact with the ball right at the bottom where it's attached to the floor. So there's still a little bit of initial height. Yeah, there are very few situations where it would be like right at zero, zero. And I think as you do the practice questions, you're going to notice that like there's a trend. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, now that we've done all of this work, we've actually answered most of our questions. So let's actually try to answer the questions now. Question number one says, what is the maximum height reached by the rocket? And what is it? Yeah, perfect. So 124 meters. Hey, how are you? I didn't do attendance yet, so it's perfect. How many seconds after it was fired does the rocket reach this height? Ben? Perfect. And question C requires a little bit of work. It says, how high was the rocket above the lake when it was fired? So on our little graph, what is this asking you for? It's asking you for that point right there, which is known as the initial height. Okay, so we're trying to figure out the initial height. What is important about the initial height? Like what's that, what is the initial height? Yep. Exactly, so the initial height is um, basically the y-intercept. And so for the y-intercept, we're gonna let t or x equal to zero, but in this case, our x is actually our t. And for this, you're going to have to use your algebraic skills to figure it out. So we're gonna go h is equal to um, negative 4.9. And instead of the T, I'm going to put in a zero.
And the reason why we're using calculators is because we're going to have numbers like this now. So go ahead, use your calculator and figure out what the answer to this would be. And see if it matches what I got. So we got a height of 1.5 meters. Let's just put it into context what that means. It means that this initial height was 1.5. That means that the rocket was probably on some sort of platform when it was fired. And that's how high above the ground it was. And honestly, you guys, the majority of our questions are going to follow the exact same steps. Uh, just some of them might require a completeness square step. So let's go to question number two. Question number two says, an equation that models the flight path of a small shuttle is y is equal to negative 0 0.38 bracket x minus 10 squared plus 40, where x is not the time this time, it's the horizontal distance traveled in meters after the shuttle is launched, and y is the height in meters above the ground. So I just wanna I just wanna tell you what this means. Like sometimes when you are, um, for example, throwing a football, you if I'm throwing a football to someone in the back of the class, I could measure how long it takes, but I can also measure the horizontal distance. So horizontal distance is basically from me to the person horizontally, and the height is above. So if I'm throwing a football, I can ask you how far horizontally it went and how high vertically it went, the height. So that's basically what this question is asking us for. Let's start by drawing a picture just like before. Um, and you're gonna notice in this question as well, it is given in vertex form. So that's less work for us. Luckily in this question, they give us X's and Y's, which is what we're more comfortable with. Um, so it tells us X is the horizontal distance in meters. And Y is the height in meters as well. Height above the ground or just height. And you know, if we were talking about where should this start, I think the context of this is a little bit easier because we all know that shuttles are not going to be starting at um, like on the ground. So for sure, this graph, oh my gosh, can we just take a moment and just look at how good that arc is? <laughs> That's really hard to do on a tablet. I'm really impressed. That was really good. Um, yeah, so it's definitely not going to start at zero, zero. Okay, so what is the vertex in this example? Yep, 10 comma 40. And by the way, sometimes I do like to break up the vertex um, as follows. I don't know if that helps. So I'm just gonna go back to the first example to tell you that this X value is your time because that's the time. And this was your height. Okay, and in this example, um, the X value here represents your, um, horizontal distance. So just write HD for horizontal distance. And the 40 in this case represents your height in meters. So if I were to graph this, I have my vertex at the top over there. I'm just going to make a dashed line going down and a dashed line going across. And we can now see our horizontal distance, this is 10 and our height is 40. So what this means is our small little shuttle reaches a maximum height of 40 meters, 10 meters after it's been traveling horizontally. So it's traveled 10 meters horizontally and at that moment it's 40 meters high. Does that context make sense? Can everyone kind of visualize what's happening? Okay, let's answer the questions. And most of the time, you guys, this is the tough part. The questions are like completely related to all of this stuff. So what is the maximum height reached by the shuttle? The, the highest point? It would be, yep. Yep, it would be 40 meters. What is the horizontal tr distance traveled when the shuttle reaches its maximum height then? 10 meters. 
The next couple of questions are related to this. So we're going to have to just flip back and forth a little bit. Actually, no, for you guys, it's a uh, side to side. So that's perfect. Okay, question C, what is the initial height of the shuttle? Um, I.e., at what height above the ground was the shuttle launched? Show your work algebraically. So just like before, um, this point is going to be right over here, and it is the initial height. And to figure this out, it's the y-intercept, so we're going to let x equal to zero, and then we're going to solve. Okay, so initial height. Y intercept, so we're going to let X equal to zero. Um, and so this is going to be Y is equal to negative 0 0.38 bracket zero minus 10 squared plus 40. Um, negative 0 0.38, 10 squared is just going to be 100 plus 40, and I'm going to get two meters when I solve this. Did you guys get that as well? Okay. I'm just going to go back and uh, label this on my actual graph. I didn't like that. And so it's fired from two meters above the ground. Okay, now we actually, we're, we have a couple more questions related to this. Question D says, how high is the shuttle after it has traveled a horizontal distance of five meters? Show your work algebraically. And the reason I'm asking you to show your work algebraically is because our sketch is not very accurate. Like if I were to figure out, okay, well, five meters horizontally is there. And then I was to go up and across, I would get an approximate value. But the only way to get an actual value is to use the equation. Um, what are we going to let x, uh, sorry, what are we going to let equal to five, the x or the y? The x. And we know that because the horizontal distance is five meters. So for this question, it's asking you for what is y equal to when x is equal to five? So again, um, you just use your, you put it into your formula, uh, your equation, and you use your calculator. 0 0.38, five minus 10 squared plus 40, negative 0 0.38. Um, this is gonna be times 25 plus 40. What'd you guys get for this one? Good job. So 30.5 meters is what I got as well. So again, to give it some context, what it's saying is at five meters over here, when you go across, that number right there should be 30.5 meters. But you can't really tell from our, our sketch because it's not the most accurate. Okay, for question E, we're actually not going to solve this. We're just going to set it up and we will maybe solve it later because it actually requires something called the quadratic formula, which we haven't reviewed. We're going to review it tomorrow. So maybe we'll come back to this question, but I want to be able to sleep tonight. So I'm not going to promise that. But um, I, if I did give you a question like this on an assessment, it would be easily factorable. So I'll go through it and tell you how to do it. What is the horizontal distance traveled when the shuttle hits the ground? Show your work algebraically, and it's a challenge. So really, what the question is asking us for is, what is this point over here? Oh, sorry, it's coming up. What is that point over there? We know that that is one of the x-intercepts. And to figure out the x-intercept, we have to let y equal to 0. And if you remember, when we were reviewing this in our chart, when we let y equal to 0, what do we have to do to solve for x, usually? Sarah? Exactly. Yeah. So what we would do is if this was a regular question without crazy decimals or anything like that, we will let y equal to zero. We would factor it. We would get two x values and whatever the positive x value was, that would be the answer. And on an assessment, if I were to give you this question and in your homework, it should be factorable. 
But for this question, it's just a little messy because it's not factorable. It uses the quadratic formula. So we will skip this question and maybe come back to it once we've reviewed the quadratic formula. But basically what the question is asking you for is it's saying the, we want to figure out the x-intercept. And to find the x-intercept, we let y equal to 0. So it would really be 0 is equal to negative 0 0.38 uh, bracket what was the original question? X minus 10 squared plus 40. We'll solve it just a little bit to get you started. And then if you wanted, you could try it yourself. Sarah? You definitely can, but I just think that this is so messy that it would take you so long. I wouldn't give you something with so many decimals and stuff like that. Okay, so to solve this, I would first uh, open up the brackets. Then I would multiply out with 0 0.38 times 20. So 0.38 times 20 would be seven point, um, positive 7.6x, and that would just be minus 3.8 plus 40. And then we would be left with um, negative 0 0.38x squared minus, oh, I'm so sorry. This is supposed to be 100. Yeah. I wish I had got that before. 100 plus. So then this is going to be 38. So this will be plus 7.6x plus 2. Okay, so this is basically what it simplifies to. Um, and then after this, we would use the quadratic formula. Uh, but like I, like I said, I'm not going to give you anything this, this bad. If I do give you this question, it should be nice and factorable or like a really easy. So if you wanted to try this yourself, maybe after tomorrow's class when we learned it, I'll give you the answers. Um, you will always get two different answers. One will be a negative and one will be a positive. The negative does not count because you can't have a negative horizontal distance like that'll be going backwards. Um, so the answer would just be 20.26 meters. Question number three, Danielle dives from a diving board at a swimming pool. Her height, y in meters above the water in terms of her horizontal distance, x in meters from the end of the board is given by y is equal to negative x squared plus two x plus three. Um, right away, I hope you guys notice that this is given in standard form, which is a very useless form to us. So before I even read the question, my first uh, thing, well, actually the question says, sketch a graph representing the scenario and complete the square to get the equation into vertex form. This is a hint to you on an assessment. I wouldn't actually tell you to complete the square. I would expect you to recognize that the equation is in standard form and then change it to vertex form by complete the square. So let's practice doing this. And this is good review for your quiz tomorrow. So we're going to have y is equal to, and we're going to group the first two terms together, negative x squared plus 2x plus 3. I'm going to factor out the negative. So it's going to be x squared, not plus, minus 2x. Then I'm going to complete the square with the 2. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. 1 squared is just 1. So I'm going to add a 1 here, subtract a 1 there and then add a plus three over there. This is a perfect square trinomial, so I should be able to factor it up nicely, and I will end up getting x minus one squared minus one plus three. And then I'm gonna distribute the negative, so it's gonna be negative bracket x minus one squared plus one plus three. And then our final answer will be negative bracket x minus one squared plus four. The question also tells us to sketch this. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I will just draw it over here. Yeah. Um, 
Um, oh, because I distributed the negative on the outside of the bracket. Hold on, I'll show you. So this, the first negative attached to the bracket with the X minus one squared, and then the other negative was multiplied to the negative one to give you positive one. Does that make sense? Okay, so we're gonna label our axes. And in this question, they're giving you Y's and X's. So Y is height in meters, and this is horizontal distance. So horizontal distance in meters. And this is height in meters. And if you look at the context of this question, um, for sure, this person is not st starting at the floor. Um, they're gonna be above the, like above the, the ground on the diving board. Oh no, that was, oh, see, I got too confident with that last one. And now I'm not making those arches as nice as they should be. Maybe one more try while you guys are still drawing. Huh, not bad. All right, so given um, our equation, what is the vertex? It's one comma four. Uh, if we were to just break this down, the one tells you your horizontal distance because it's the X value and your four tells you your height because that is your Y value. So I'm just gonna label that on this graph as well. So this means when Danielle travels one meter across, the highest point um, from the ground is gonna be four meters above the ground. Or sorry, above the water in this case. Yes. The, oh, the vertex? uh it doesn't matter you can or can't like at the top you mean yeah i sort of haven't been but i wrote it at the bottom so either or yeah okay any questions about this so far i think by the third example it is quite repetitive so hopefully you guys are feeling a little bit more confident about this now all right let's answer our questions based on this information so uh question letter b it says am i going too fast are you guys okay we're good okay so what was Danielle's maximum height? Yep, four meters. And what was the horizontal distance that she reached this maximum height at? One meter. Um, from what height did Danielle dive into the water? So this is just like before, our initial height. So um, we're gonna let uh, X, uh, sorry, initial height is Y. We're gonna let X equal to zero. So this is your Y intercept and we're gonna let X equal to zero and we're gonna solve. So now you guys, you have to think to yourself, which equation do you think is better to figure out the initial height? Should we be using the standard form or should we be using the vertex form? We could use vertex form, but which is easier. If we're letting X equal to zero, Standard, because look, you don't even have to really do any math. If you look at your standard, this becomes a zero, this becomes a zero, and the only thing that's left is the three. Does it really matter? No, not at all. You could use either and you would still get the same answer. But if you really want to be efficient, then use the, um, use the standard form. So y is equal to negative x squared plus 2x plus 3. And we're going to put in a zero here. So zero squared plus 2 times 0 plus 3. And so that means she is diving from one of those three meter diving boards. Whoa. So I'm just gonna put that in here. Our initial height is three meters. All right, two more questions. At what horizontal distance did Danielle enter the water? This is the same question that was a challenge before, but in this case, we can actually solve this question. It works out really nicely. So at what horizontal distance is she entering the board? They're asking you for what is her distance at that point right there, which is also known as your x-intercept. And to figure out the x-intercept, we're gonna let y equal to zero and we're gonna solve. 
So we are having our x intercept and we're going to y equal to zero. So it's going to be zero is equal to a factor out of negative. So it'll be x squared minus 2x minus 3. We're going to try to factor this. So this will be negative 3 plus 1. We're going to solve for both of our x's. So this is going to be x is equal to 3. And this is going to be x is equal to negative 1. Which one of these x's will we not consider? Yeah, because she can't go to a, hor a horizontal distance. So this is inadmissible. And that means that at 3 meters, um, she entered the water. Last question, how high is Danielle after she has traveled a horizontal distance of two meters? Remember, horizontal distance represents your X value. So it's saying when X is equal to two, what is Y gonna be equal to? Okay, and to solve this question, we're just going to look at our original question, which is Y is equal to negative X squared plus two X plus three. We're trying to solve for y, so that's good. And wherever you have an x, you're going to put in a 2. So negative 4 plus 4 plus 3. And so you end up getting 3 meters as well. And I'm so sorry. Yeah, no, that's right. So she enters the water after three meters of horizontal distance. And after two meters of horizontal distance, she is two, three meters above the ground, above the water. Sarah? Um, is it okay? Yes, of course. Is the question easier with vertex? It doesn't matter. Yeah, the only time the question is easier is for the, the x, when x's are zeros. Okay, you guys, and then that's it. Um, your homework is going to be handout B. And for you guys online, I'm going to show you those so you can look at them. And also, there are a bunch of textbook questions that you can do, but I would actually focus on handout B right now in class because uh, you have it right in front of you. All the answers are at the bottom as well. Okay, so let me show you page one of handout B. Uh, I'm going to actually also make sure this stuff is visible on Brightspace because I have put some stuff on there. I just don't know if I made it visible. So that's page one of handout B. And then this is page two of Handout B. Okay, bye recording.